Hello, my name is Zach White. I chose to discuss the Airbus A350 composite rear wing spar manufactured by GKN Aerospace. What is a rear wing spar? The rear and front wing spars of the wing comprise the principal structural members of the aircraft wing. They carry the flight load during operation and support the weight of the wing while on the ground. The rear spar runs laterally, extending the whole length of the wing and provides the main attachment point for the landing gear. Ribs connect the rear and front spars together. Historically, wing spars have been made of aluminum or even laminated wood. However, with increasing importance of reducing fuel costs, Airbus has turned to carbon fiber composites for many primary aircraft structures, including the A350 rear wing spar. GKN Aerospace reduces the rear spar for the Airbus A350 at their facility in Filton, United Kingdom. Production began in 2008, and as of now, 407 A350s have been delivered, with another 508 on order. The rear spar dimensions, when fully assembled, are approximately 27 meters long and weigh a total of 1,800 kilograms, or 4,000 pounds. The spar at its root thickness, which is um, the end closest to the fuselage, is 25 millimeters and tapers to just 5 millimeters at the outermost segment. The spar has a height of 2 meters at the root end and tapers to 0.25 meters at the wing tip. Airbus specifies the material used for all their aircraft structures and components, including the rear spar. Hexel is the primary material supplier for all carbon fiber composites used on the A350. For the rear spar, GKN uses Hexel's Hexply M21E-IMA prepreg system, which is an aerospace grade prepreg. The reinforcement is IMA pan-based fibers with an intermediate modulus and high tensile strength. The fibers undergo a surface treatment. The material properties of the reinforcement were custom designed to meet Airbus requirements by Hexel. The matrix used is M21E, a high performance epoxy. Hexel claims it is very tough and has excellent high energy impact resistance. From the product data sheet that I provided on the right there, we can see that uh, IMA 12K toe has a tensile strength of about 6,000 megapascals and a tensile modulus of about 300 uh, gigapascals. The elongation to failure is 1.9%. The M21E epoxy has a tensile strength of 23 megapascals and a tensile modulus of 23 gigapascals. When coupled as a prepreg hexel claims the tensile strength is about 3,000 megapascals and has a tensile modulus of 178 uh, gigapascals. Due to the material system being a prepreg, Hexel is able to get a fiber volume fraction to anywhere in the range of 58 to 60 percent. To keep up with demand, Hexel has had to develop high production techniques which can produce 50 kilograms per hour of prepreg. Hexel is contracted to provide the prepreg to Airbus, and as such, the material is not directly sold to consumers. However, I was able to find specifics on their contract with Airbus. Each A350 contains approximately four million U.S. dollars worth of Hexel material, which includes the fuselage parts, keel beam, both wings, and the appendage. Hexel's contract is expected to generate them four to five billion dollars in revenue. As will be discussed later on, the prepreg is laid up on a hollow mandrel made of a carbon fiber composite. The mandrel had to be lightweight and ultra stiff, thus a CFRP system is used. On the right you can see the mandrel in use during the layup process. A female tool made of invar is also used during the curing process. Into the manufacturing process. The rear wing spar is manufactured in three separate segments the outer, mid, and inner spars. This is achieved by first laying up the prepreg on the CFRP mandrel by a 5-axis automated fiber placement machine, which is provided by mTORS in Navarra, Spain. Two spars, the left and right, are laid up simultaneously on the mandrels, which can place 16 toes or tapes at a time. The AFP can also cut and restart each toe independently. The machine which is programmed can lay the tapes in very precise orientations and thicknesses depending on the stress requirements demanded by the wing. The AFP is weight limited to 5 metric tons due to inertia related issues brought upon by the rotation of the mandrel, which weighs 4 metric tons. 
To accelerate and decelerate at the proper rates, the mandrel had to be light enough so that the AFP machine could overcome those inertial forces. That and the requirement of a 0.5 millimeter or less deflection under a 150 kilogram load drove the mandrel to be made of CFRPs. After layup, the units are then debulked in a room temperature vacuum to remove trapped air. I was luckily able to find a video of the AFP machine operating. So this is a five axis automated fiber placement machine. It's used to lay the carbon fiber tape onto a mandrel that represents the actual shape of the spar that's manufactured. It can lay up to 16 layers of tape at one time and it has five axis of movement, three in the head and then the movement of the actual um, mandrel itself. The structure that you see there is an inner rear spar from an A350. The actual component, the amount of carbon, total carbon is laid is about 350 kilograms per side, so 700 kilograms a wing set. And the fiber placement technology and the fact that you have the automation and the accuracy allows us to tailor the actual shape much closer to what is actually required rather than in old legacy manufacturing carbon processes. You didn't have the ability to tailor the structure and therefore it wasn't as an optimized structure, the, the weight of the aircraft affected would be higher. So these machines really give you that possibility. And then from a pure technology and a product perspective and a product performance perspective, it's much more accurate and much more flexible in the actual structures and shapes that it can lay in carbon, which allows us to produce a more optimized, weight efficient structure. What's very critical on this is about the actual layup and the direction of the carbon fiber that we actually lay down. And this time of technology, particularly with those kind of geometries, which is a, some very aggressive rates of change, this fiber placement machines allows us to actually achieve that. Again, that's something that we haven't been able to do in the past. After the debulking stage, the spars are then transferred to a female invar tool for curing. The spars are cured in one of two autoclaves. Both are 16 by 3.5 meters in size, with a standard cycle time for 10 hours, which includes ramping. The two autoclaves meet required production rates, assuming a 30-minute load and unload at the beginning and end of each cycle. I could, not, I could unfortunately not find a picture of the autoclave in use at the Filton facility, so the pictured autoclave is one used at a different GKN plant in the Netherlands. Either way, the autoclaves used in the aerospace industry are quite large. Once cured, the spars undergo several finishing processes. Brackets are manually attached, which facilitate movement of the spars around the automated assembly portion of the plant. Metallic fittings are inserted into the inner spar, which support the undercarriage and flaps. A five-axis robot will then drill a total of 16,000 holes across the set of six spars, from there, additional fasteners are fitted by a second robot. Due to slight inconsistencies in the prepreg thickness, the spar sections do not align perfectly. Spars are thus fit together using photogrammetric equipment which measure the spars' geometries. Joining plates are modified such that any offset is perfectly mirrored. The custom plates are then used to join the three sections. Finally, the spars are reseparated and transported to an Airbus facility in Broughton, UK for integration with the rest of the wing assembly. Use of the AFP machine ensures extremely precise placement of the carbon fiber tape. This process yields a tolerance of plus or minus 0.15 millimeters over the 30 meter long spar assembly. Post cure, the spars also undergo non-destructive inspection using an ultrasonic machine provided by GE Inspection Technologies. According to the manufacturer, it can spot defects down to 6 square millimeters. The left and right spars are laid up simultaneously and will take 8 24 hour working days to fully lay up the spars. The use of the AFP machine reduces manufacturing time by 8 when compared to hand layup. When GKN first began manufacturing wing spars, they had two AFP machines in use, but now have fully implemented five AFP machines to keep up with demand. As of 2019, GKN produced about 10 ship sets per month. A ship set is about one is one plane, so in this case, 20 full rear spars per month. However, the impact of COVID has seen GKN reduce production rates to about six ship sets per month. 
The capital investments required for this scale of manufacturing are absolutely insane. The GKN Filton plant is 80,000 square meters and was purchased by GKN from Airbus in 2008 for $210 million. Since then, GKN has provided an additional investment of $192 million into the plant. The five AFP machines that GKN employs cost $6.76 million apiece. While I could not find a cost on the autoclaves, I would reasonably expect them to exceed $1 million apiece. GKN globally employs about 60,000 people, with 1,500 people working at the Filton plant alone. Since the development of the AFP system in 2009, GKN has pioneered new methods to manufacture rear wing spars. As of 2019, they reached a major milestone in their Wings of Tomorrow program, where they successfully demonstrated a large-scale resin transfer molding system that could be implemented into manufacturing of the spars. This would reduce the production process by a third, and would enable GKN to increase production rates substantially. In addition, Hexel, since the launch of their Hexply M21E-IMA prepreg, have developed a new prepreg system, Hexply M91, which has reportedly superior mechanical properties. And that's all I have on the manufacturing process for the Airbus A350 rear wing spar. Uh, and here are my sources. Uh, thank you all for listening.